Welcome, everybody. Hey, welcome to 100 and 0. And what's 100 and 0? Kapow! That's God's record. The true undefeated champion. OMG, people. I am so blessed. I have so much to tell you. Oh, I am so excited, so excited. But first, you know what we got to do. And that's prop the prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me, Susan Samuel. Let not I, Susan Samuel, speak, Lord, but let you speak through me, Holy Spirit. And let this word, Heavenly Father, just be such a nourishment to people, mind, body, soul, and spirit, Lord. Let them receive it, Lord. For we come before you, Holy Spirit, knowing that you are God and you are God alone. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Okay, people, let's get started. Okay, now I'm so excited, okay, because, um, you know, I always talk about my coach now, right? I'm, I'm wearing these glasses here. I, I don't even know who the name they are. Because I, I miss my coach and, and I've heard from so many of you saying, hey, where are your glasses at? You always talk about your coach. Okay, I know it's not the same. I wish you could see I have on the watch. You see, I got on my coach watch. Um, Josiah, my sunshine, Jimmy Neutron, call me the ambassador for coach. When I tell you I had the watch, the purse, the um, I had the glasses, I had the wallet. I have the checkbook holder. I also have the business card holder. I have the shoes. I mean, sandals, you name it. He's sneakers. He said, Mom, you, you might as well just be an ambassador for coach. Okay, but I have to say, people, and, and I have good news in regards to that. But before I do that, you know what I always do. As promise, I always like to thank those. Look at me, people. I got on the green, not to change the subject, but try to keep in with the Christmas spirit. I pray that everybody had a blessed um, and, and happy um, Christmas. And today is the first day of Kwanzaa, so happy Kwanzaa. You know, but uh, I want to thank all those who has sponsored um, it takes a community to raise a child, which is the nonprofit arm. Um, our backpack giveaway, which has literally assisted families in over three different states. All right, people. I mean, come on, give yourself a hand. Three different states. Okay, so I want to thank, and those states being New York City, California, and Pennsylvania. Okay, three high power states. You see what God can do? So I want to thank our donors, both in the individual and corporate, contributing to the backpack giveaway. Okay, so I want to start with Gerard DK II, Tiara Williams, Ronnie Hightower, Christy Robinson for Omega Fitness. Now, people, trust me, I did not forget. We are going to do, because the series God has given me is God and business, what does the scripture say? So I'm lining up my business people. You know, it's the holidays. and trying to catch people with their schedules. So it's going to come forth. Trust and believe, okay? And um, Christy has um, an amazing um, fitness um, program in which a sister got it going on. I got to give it to her. So definitely she's going to be one. Robert Spada, Tiffany Spikes. Sheila Brown, Carol Samuel, Full Armor Ministries, Lillian Hernandez, Desmond Scott Financing, Zenobia Samuel Robinson, Venus Tilly, Stacy Stewart Keller, Lloyd Strayhorn, dealing with those numbers, people, numerology, Nelia Trinningham, Michael Williams, Tanya from Helping Hands Daycare. Sister Deborah, uh, Sister, I see the star in the east, my people. My sister, Deborah Lowe's from Sunshine Chapter number 34. Hello. 
brother Kevin Wadley from Adelphic Union Lodge 14, Margaret Negrand, Susan Livingston, TD Bank on Hamilton Street, and Allentown, PA, Walmart, Mill Creek and Allentown, PA, Dr. Michael Grayson, Credit Repair, uh, and that's another individual I'm going to get on here because people, you know, you can't do nothing. I mean, nothing without good credit. So we're going to have them on there to talk about credit, credit repair, especially coming um, for the new year. Those of us who pull for 2022, that's right, people, is our year. God is going to make it so unstoppable for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Sean Morris. Now, people, look at my hair. When I mean I went blue, I completely, look, look at this, look at this. See the back? You see my girl hook a sister up? I completely went blue. Okay, so shout out to my girl, Sean, my hairdresser from Elegance. Uh, when I went to her, actually last week to get my hair done and it's going to have interview of, I'm not going to lie, people. I was waiting, waiting, and of course she's busy. And uh, I'm going to reschedule it. So, Sean, I text you. I'm coming back for you, beautiful. So that way I can interview you and we can talk about your business and the great things that you do with here. Teresa from Walmart. Now, every time I get on here, people, I'm praying that this woman, Teresa, just happened to, to stumble upon this. Uh, Teresa's a woman that I, I never met before. As I was in Walmart uh, shopping, she saw my cart and was wondering, like, what's going on? Because, I mean, I had carts, rather, full of school supplies. So I explained to her that I'm doing this backpack giveaway to help children, you know, that's in need. And she walked away, and then she came back, and she said, here, this is all I had in my pocket. And I was just so bless it, it just flabbergasted and I'm like oh my gosh I, I don't know this one but wouldn't God do that people that's what God do you know just the spirit you know uh, of being a, a human being seeing another one that's helping and she wants to put her hand to the plow so shout out hello let's get Teresa uh, a round of applause God bless you mm, thank you so much so every time I get on here, I mention you because I didn't get a name or phone number and anything. She was gone. Okay. And um, Matt from Armors Theory Fitness in Allentown, PA. Go, Matt. That's my gym, people. You know, a sister got to look at me. Sister, I don't lost over 50 pounds. People see me. Sister looking good, right? You know, so I go to the gym. I make sure I work out and I take care of myself and I go to Armour's Theory Fitness, and um, today I did 18 splat points, okay? So um, I'll explain that another time. And just know that my metabolism kicked in. I'm burning fat as I'm sitting down, okay? I also want to thank my beautiful sister, Dominique Sharpton from National Action Network, and my sister, Maxine from Sunshine Chapter Number 34, and Van Martin from Van Martin Entertainment. Okay, people, so, oh, before I get into the word, what I'm going to discuss today, um, I want to say thank you. Okay, people, I'm holding up an email. All right, so I reached out. I want to thank, first of all, Professor T.D. Jakes, you know, because he said oftentimes you have an idea or something is not enough just to have it, but you have to go that extra mile. So when I lost my glasses um, from my coach, I said, you know what? I researched them, I Googled them, and I got a hold of Andrea Shaw Resnick, who is the chief communications officer. So I wrote her and letting them know, listen, coach, you know, I make your glasses look good. As I always say, people, you know, I make, I don't know who these glasses are by. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is my backup here. But even the backup pair, a sister make them look good. Okay. So I let Coach know that. And I said, listen, I need some glasses. Okay. You have not what? Because you ask not. What it said, you know, I gave her the scripture, Matthew 7, 7. It said, ask, you know, it shall be given unto you. Knock and the door shall be opened. So, you know, it might, you know, you always hear the saying, a closed mouth don't get fed. Right. And it's a squeaky wheel. What? 
that gets the oil, okay? So I put it out there and I said, you know what? I don't have any more. I lost my glasses and I asked if not only can they give me, send me some glasses so I can represent on here. And I have to say thank you to my viewers. Thank you guys in which that I have over, I believe now it's like 1,600 um, viewers that's been watching 100 and zero, okay? And she said that she will pass the email on to a PR team at Coach Brand for their response. So with that said, you know, I, uh, I will like everyone because I notice I get a lot of traffic. Uh, when I look at YouTube analytics and shout out to YouTube for doing that, literally like over 250 something. I mean, it was like close to 300 people that literally come through my channel. That's not even um, subscribers on here. So please, people, I'm asking you to help me next show coach that this is a channel worth sponsoring and investing in. Also, I'm going to put in the chat, you know, always the show more, show less people. I put a lot of information in there, okay? Um, I have in there. Oh, I also want to um, shout out to my son, Gerard, on um, his new position that um, he's going for. God bless you, son. Uh, in there also, you will see he was uh, one of the um, individuals, actually, the only one that was asked a young man to speak about um, Colin Powell, and that was my baby. So I put the link in there for you guys to see that also. Um, Josiah, hashtag stand with Josiah people. You know, we're still right now um, at the Supreme Court, you know, waiting you know, for response from them. But Josiah actually just received um, a congressional award from Congressman Greg Meeks. Um, shout out to Greg and, um, and also senatorial award from Senator um, Leroy Comrie, you know, through You Can Go to College. You know, so this is what a mother is fighting for. This is what I'm fighting for, people. So, um and shout out to You Can Go to College as well. So um, once again, all those who are my subscribers, please make sure, because I believe it's close to 100, make sure when I send this out, you subscribe, like, and share. We got to show Coach that this is a program worth sponsoring, people. And um, all those who come through my channel, when you look at this, Please bless the sister. That's right. Bless the sister that I have an awesome opportunity, you know, for this to even go bigger. And this is what the Lord put on my heart to do. Um, Bishop, um, I want to say pastor, I mean pastor, um, Professor T.D. Jakes, you know, I DM'd you on Instagram. I sent you a message. Uh you know, also Pastor Marvin Sapp, I sent you a message as well. Please, guys, you know, you guys uplift me, encourage me, and, and you teach me from afar. You don't know. I follow you guys. I, I, I listen to you. I, I study the scripture, you know, listen to the world like you, you teach. And and I, I need your help, please. So if you guys could just honestly, it'd be such a blessing to put it on your Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Ask people to support me, to subscribe, like, and share. And this show, Coach, that this is an awesome channel worthy of them sponsoring. Okay, so now today's work. Well, I asked the Lord, what should I talk about? I, I just don't come on here uh, just to be talking, people. I, I want when I come on here that um, I'm uplifting, uh, I'm giving testimony, I'm giving word that's going to encourage someone. And I thank God that thus far, that's what this channel has been doing. I, I thank you for your comments, for reaching out, and it is greatly appreciated. But with this holiday season that is upon us, and you notice towards the end of the year, 
that a lot of people, I don't like to say die. I will say transition because we don't die. Transition home to glory. So with that said, of course, when we lose someone, we're saddened, right? We're saddened and Lord knows I spoke about my testimony with Nana, which I'm going to give again because God has elevated me. Hallelujah. To a whole nother level in that. And so today's broadcast is you can't physically walk into heaven. All right? Think about that. You can't physically walk into heaven. Okay? So, with that said, now, like I said, I don't like to say die because we don't die. And then I did some research. Bear with me a minute. As I bring it up, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. So, and shout out to Bishop William Bennett for taking the time out um, with me. You know, people, this is truly all the work of the Lord. Although I'm an ordained chaplain and minister, you know, knowing the word, you know, um, I'm not, I didn't go to theology school or anything like that. But it's my faith and knowing the word and knowing the scriptures, how I was able to obtain what I have obtained. So I'm still a work in progress. I'm still learning. So Bishop William Bennett helped me with the um, concordance, the Bible concordance today. And where we found the scripture and it said, be asking in the bodies to be present before the Lord. Okay, so when you're present before the Lord, okay, you're absent within the body, correct? So here it is, and it says to be absent in the body, that is to die, to depart out of this world. It's the interval between death and the resurrection. Is a state of absence from the body, which is this physical flesh, during which the time the soul is disembodied and exists in a separate state. Not in the state of inactivity and sleep, for that will be not a desirable, but of happiness and glory, enjoying the presence of God and praising of him, believing and waiting for the resurrection of the body when both will be united together again. And after that, there will be no more absence, neither from the body nor from the Lord. Now, I said a lot here. Okay, so let me wind a bit. So, I have spoken about Nano, my um, fiance, the love of my life, that 10 minutes after his last words to me, I literally seen a light, people. I saw a light come up out of him and poof into thin air. Okay. And after that, Nano, of course, was in, um, he wasn't responsive then. Uh, and then when we went to the hospital, he was actually um, pronounced dead there. So, and then to read this in the Bible concordance, where it says that your body, your soul disembodied, right? And is separate from this state here, this physical state 
where you're before the presence of God, praising him, believing and waiting for the resurrection of the body when both will be united together. So what that is saying, people, is that right now, if your physical flesh is to separate from your spirit, right, and you go before the Lord, we're waiting for the resurrection because remember, Jesus promised to come again. This time when he come again, your spirit that is in heaven will be united with your fleshly body state. Okay? And there will be no more absence, neither from the body nor from the Lord. And then it said, and to be present with the Lord, this was promised to Christ in the everlasting covenant that all his spiritual seed and offspring should be with him. This he expected. It was the joy of this, which was set before him that carried him through his suffering and death with so much cheerfulness. This is the sum of his prayers and intercession and what all his preparations in heaven are on account of. It is, which, it is this which supports and comforts the saints under all of their sorrows here and which makes them meet death with pleasure, which otherwise is formidable and disagreeable to nature and even the serious of parting with life um, to be with Christ, which is far better. Wow. So people, you know, I understand, and Lord knows I of all people, because I have cried, I, I have mourned, and I have just even went into depression over um, losing Nana. But at the end of the day, people, what I realize is that once again, from what I saw, his spirit lives on. How do we think we're going to get to heaven? You know, <laughs> it, it, it's amazing because I really had to stop and, and ask that question. We cannot physically walk up into heaven, people, like we are right now. That's not happening. This vessel have to be left behind. And with that said, when the spirit, which is the light of Christ, that's within us, is gone, then this vessel is no longer alive. And of course, we're going to miss that individual. Of course, we're going to cry. I mean, there are scriptures that I have pulled up where God promises his healing and answers are in his word. Revelation 21, 4, he said he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed. Now think about that, people. What I just read from the Bible Concordance, right? So now it's saying that it will be a time where right now, if any of us was to transition, okay, our body will be left behind and our spirit will go on to be with the Lord, right? But when Christ comes back, Okay, then our spirit will connect with the body again. And it says that the old order of things has passed away. So now this will not be life as we know it here on earth anymore. It, it will be no more pain. No more crying, no more mourning. This is what is in his word. Revelation 21, 4. And then look at John 16, 22. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice 
and no one will take away your joy from you. People, I'm telling you, listen. Okay, so I told you about what I seen with Nano, knowing that we all are the light of Christ. It's within us, right? Now, here's the second thing. I've been listening to, and shout out to James Woodward, right? Um, he was on um, It's Supernatural. And this is a man that had literally died. He was brain dead for 11 hours. He had died. I have been listening to people who have actually transitioned over, okay? And now God sent them back to tell us what's going on. People, this is real. Why I could say that? I'm blessed that God didn't, I didn't have to die. But in the vision, God has shown me heaven, okay? So now, as I'm listening to these people's testimony, I know they're telling the truth because I know what I saw. So one day, I just cried out to God. I said, Father, what is my purpose, God? What is my purpose? I, I want to get this right here on earth, you know, and I, I just want to live out my purpose so I can hear those faithful words. Well done, my faithful and humble servant. And so the Holy Spirit, as I was praying, has showed me a vision where the ceiling had opened up. And when the ceiling opened up, people, when I tell you it was a light, so brilliant, so pure, words can't even describe it. I couldn't even look at it. I was like this, right? Because it was so bright. And as I'm like this, trying to see what's going on, I see this brilliant light, so more brilliant than the sun, just filled the room. And then I see all this beautiful array of colors. Oh my gosh, people. Words cannot describe the colors that I've seen. That's why when I hear these people that talk about when they transition and they mention about the colors and how beautiful it is it, and they can't put it into words, I know exactly what they're talking about because I saw it. God allowed me to see it. And when I tell you the peacefulness, the calmness, the tranquility, There's nothing on earth that can describe this calmness, this peacefulness, like no worries, no sorrow. I just felt the warmth, the love of God, the warmth people. Oh, my goodness. And as I'm there, it's like the Lord showed me my mother back in time, like when she was pregnant with me. And then all of a sudden, like, all this light was around my mother. And then, like, a beam ray of light went through her belly, which she was carrying me. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit showed me, like, as I'm before you now. And then all of a sudden, like, all this light is around me. And then, like, a beam of light came here and went into me. And then... I'm just soaking all of this in, people. I mean, just basking in this glory, just, just the fullness of the Lord, just feeling this tranquility and this peacefulness. And then all of a sudden, the heavens closed up and I was back here again. I was like, no! I mean, shout out to James Woodward once again because he said that when the Lord has sent him back, he did not want to come back. You know, he was fighting like, no, Lord, I want to stay. And I know exactly what he's talking about. But one thing he mentioned, which was so profound, he said that when he touched the angel of the Lord and moved from him, it's like the, the glow of the angel like stuck to him for about six to eight inches and then went back. He called it God's sticky love. He called it sticky love, people. God loves us so 
I mean, what did we celebrate yesterday, people? The birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He loved us so that God came down as flesh. Think about it. God came down as flesh, people, so that he could experience and understand what we go through as man and to show us how to live a life you know, of Christ. That's what he came for. You know, so when he spoke about that sticky love, I said, wow, that's an awesome way to put it. But what I love what he said, and he quoted Charles Dickens, where he said, make mankind your business. Think about that. So now James Woodward said that in his testimony, Woodford rather, how when the angel of the Lord presented the book of life, his book of life to God, how it was no bigger, he said, than a, a diner menu. He was so ashamed because, you know, he made things his God. Instead of the true and living God, he made things his God. So his book of life was very shallow. And he said he was so ashamed. He said he ever got the opportunity, you know, Lord, please. He said when he go back, he going to make sure that they have a forklift to lift up his book. Make mankind your business. People, I know it's hard. Trust me, when you lose someone that's dear to you, rather it be a spouse, a friend, a parent, a child even, I can't even imagine. But guess what? We all in the end belong to God. Okay, our lives are not our own. It's not. So why do we fool ourselves? I mean, I like this scripture, Luke 20, 36. But they cannot die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. Okay, so I want to talk about that resurrection because I know we all talk about, and we all heard, most of us that is, about Lazarus, right? And, and what is Lazarus? Well, let me give you a fun fact. Do you know the name? Lazarus comes from the Hebrew word Elizer, which actually means God is my help or God has helped. Okay, so that's what Lazarus means. And so I want you guys to think about this for a minute because as I was doing my research, I really thought about this because remember, let me read it. Okay. So here it is. Um, Lazarus was um, actually one few whom Jesus raised from the dead during his ministry on earth. And this incident, of course, is recorded in the New Testament, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11. And it's verses 1 through 44. So in your own time, I would like for you to take the time to sit down and read it. But this miracle actually spells out God's glory all throughout, as if all the events that happened and were happening were organized so that people would be a witness to a miracle and they will believe that the teacher who resides with them is none other than the right hand of God and his only son. Okay. So now, you know, we already know that Lazarus was sick, right? And uh, Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus to, you know, please come quick, come quick, come quick and see um, about Lazarus. So now, remember, Jesus loved Martha and his and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. 
And you're like, well, if Jesus loved him, why would he do that, right? Listen. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you and you are going there again. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? And if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in night, he stumbles because the light is not in them. After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought that it meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin and said to the fellow disciples, let us all go that we may die with him. So that's what he's going to think. Okay. So now here it is. They went and they found Lazarus already had been in the tomb for four days. Now this is four days. Okay. And so many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house and Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So see, Martha is thinking the resurrection on the last day, but Jesus had another plan. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. You know what's so interesting, people? Jesus is right there before them performing all of these miracles and they still don't realize that he is the resurrection and the light that he literally had to tell her i am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God who is coming into the world. So when she has said this, she went and called her sister Mary saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. And now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in a place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to go to the tomb and weep there. Now when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who come with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus went. So look at that, people. God so loved us. He came in flesh as Jesus. And with all of this, even though knowing that once we believe in him, we shall have everlasting life. He was so moved, Jesus also wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved them. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have also kept this man from dying? But no. See, people, as I was studying this, 
The Holy Spirit showed me something. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So she took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said on this account, of these people standing around, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out. His hands, his feet bounded with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. After Lazarus was resurrected by the Lord, all those who stood there were astonished. Why some of the Jews, some of those Jews actually started believing. Some went ahead to inform the Pharisees of this miracle. And this eventually led to his crucifixion. But I have to tell you this. Because remember, right, in the scripture where Jesus said, um, tear down this temple and watch, I will build it up in three days. And they think he was talking about the building, the body temple. No, he was talking about this temple. So Lazarus was actually the first resurrection. Jesus was showing us that in that resurrection, for us to truly believe he is the son of God. Now think about it, people. It took him four days. Why is it four days that Jesus took to get to Lazarus? Think about it. Jesus could have, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, like he did on um, the man, you know, with his daughter. When he said that my daughter is sick and um, he said, you don't have to be there. Just say it and I know that she will be healed. And that's what Jesus did. He said, your faith, you know, has, you know, held you and, and told him that his daughter was healed. And when the man got back to the house, he asked the time that his daughter, you know, came back. And they told him it was the same time they had spoken to Jesus. So Jesus could have easily done this. But Jesus wanted to show the people, okay, because the Pharisees believe that if you're dead for three days and you get back up, that that was pretty much on your own accord. But if you're dead for four days, they believe that you're dead, you're gone, there's no coming back. So that is the reason why Jesus went, okay, and rose Lazarus on the fourth day. Day to show and prove no, that this man was dead to the fact where his body was stinking. Okay, his body was stinking people. And here it is now. Lazarus came back from the dead. Okay, but think about it. His spirit was gone, right? And then God called his spirit to unite back with his body. That's what happened. That is a perfect example of what the um, concordance is speaking about when the spirit and the body will become as one because that's what Jesus had did right there and then. So now this is going to be done on a whole for the world, people. That when Jesus come back, that our spirits now will join with the body but it's just so interesting once again you, you know we have songs like I, I was listening to mary mary right when they spoke um they have the song called heaven you know this song was years ago where it said i gotta get myself together because i got some place to go and i'm praying when i get there i'll see everyone i know i want to go to heaven i want to go to have it. I mean, even in that song, if we listen to it, they was talking about getting themselves together. Why? Because they want to go to heaven. 
That's what we should do, people. Right now, the focus should be making mankind our business. And what does that mean? That means people loving thy neighbor as you love yourself. Okay? Considering other people. And it, it doesn't always have to be monetary. A simple phone call, hey, how you doing? Do you need anything? Do you need for me to go to the store for you? You know, uh, hey, do you need help? You know, with anything you have to do around the house or something, or even in business people. Just being kind to one another, looking out for each other. That should be our focus. Of course, if we lose someone, it's going to hurt. Because in this, I read, remember John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. Even Jesus wept because he was moved by seeing everyone that was crying because they lost Lazarus. Okay? So that's quite natural to do. And there's nothing wrong in doing that. But I don't want you to get stuck there. I don't want you to get stuck there. And, and for me, it has taken time to come to this realization. So that's why I'm here, because I want to help you. We can't physically walk into heaven. Let's be clear, people. We cannot physically walk into heaven. This flesh has to die. The spirit has to be released in order for us to go to heaven. But in the meantime, what do we do? We help people. We be a blessing to one another. And let's say you have someone that transitioned. Because like I said, we don't die. Our spirit lives on. What I do, people, and I thank God for technology. Whenever I get to a point at times I want to hear Nano's voice. I go to the YouTube videos and I watch the happy times with us and and I listen and I remember that. Okay. I would encourage people because of all this technology. I mean, pictures are awesome, but you know, video is even better. You know, you could, um, Take videos of your family, videos of one another, and and that way you have those memories. You know, so if if an individual was to transition home to glory, because that's where everybody wants to go eventually, right? Everybody want to go to heaven, right? But it's only one way to get to heaven, people. The flesh has to die. The flesh has to die. So, with that said, focus on life. Focus on being a blessing to others. Focus on your relationship with God. Because the same way you take care of your physical body, you also have to take care of your spiritual body. The same way you clothe your body, you feed your body, you have to do it with your spiritual as well. Spend time with the Lord. Meditate, prayer, talk to him. He wants to know about you people. That sticky love. He wants to know what's going on with you. Tell him about your day. Like how I'm talking to you, talk to him. A simple conversation. God wants to hear was on our mind. He wants us to have that relationship with him. And I know people, it gets hard. Trust me. <laughs> to have the love of your life transition before your eyes unexpectedly. He was only 42. That's hard. But you know what I thank God for? I thank God for my faith in him. 
Because even though that happened, I'm going to be honest, people. First of all, I was shook. When I seen that, like, whoop, psh, I did not know. I, I didn't know. I, I, I First, I went like this to make sure my eyes are wide open, that I wasn't asleep. I was awake. Because that was something like out of Twilight Zone sci-fi thing. You know, I said, Lord, I, I, I'm not prepared for that. But guess what? He never put on you no more than you could bear. And apparently the Lord trusted me with that to show me that even though I was afraid, I still trusted him. I was um, watching uh, Surviving Death. And these are people who actually had death experience where they died and came back to life. And one of them spoke about how she was just so afraid to tell about her encounter was going on. She said she just knew she was going to wind up in a straitjacket. And I said, my God in Zion. See, I love the way how God always put resources out there so that you know that you're not alone. Because I was thinking the same thing. I said, Lord, who am I going to tell this to? I said, they going to think I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Pop. They really going to put me in a straight jacket. I saw myself in a white padded room. Okay, people. I said, all right, Lord, I, I can't tell nobody this. But as time went on and slowly but surely, I'm not going to lie. I had some people that looked at me and said, okay, Susie, um, what did you smoke today? <laughs> okay. And if anybody knows me, I thank God. I'm a person, I don't drink no form of alcohol whatsoever. I can't even drink uh, a, a cooler, okay? God made it so I can't drink no form of alcohol. Um, I was asthmatic, so cigarette smoking, none of that has ever been, you know, in me because I'm allergic to that. That really would trigger an asthma attack, okay? So, no, um, this is real, people. This is real. Okay, so I say that to say that it hurts. I know it hurts. I know when I get to heaven, it's going to have rivers of my tears. Because remember said, scripture said how uh, your tears, God save your tears. I know it have rivers of my tears, people. Because my hurt, my, my heart rather, was crushed. I was shattered, you know, to finally meet and be with someone that accept me for who I am. I mean, think, look at me, people. I'm not your typical, uh, I want to say, uh, a woman in that, you know, my, my nails, you see, these are my actual natural nails, okay? And, you know, you see my hair, you know, I'm different. You know, for a man to be able to accept all of this, including, you know, my mind. I thank God he blessed me with a brain. Uh, I'm actually in a doctoral program right now, um, focusing on um, organizational leadership um, with an emphasis in special education. Uh, right now, also, I'm in school, um, New York Institute of Fashion and Decor, and and now I'm about to get into real estate. I mean, I'm always busy doing something. And, you know, and not to mention, most importantly, my ministry that I do. You know, every morning I literally send out uh, over 100 prayers to people, encouraging people and, and responding. And, and, and I get texts all day, pray for me and pray for this one and pray for that one. You know, it's not easy. You know, so to have someone, a man in my corner who was in the world like I, I, I am, and he was an ordained minister, and we were even talking about building a church together. And then for him to go like that, people, you know, my nails like that. I mean, it, it was heart-wrenching. So I understand it. I get it. But I too had to realize you can't physically walk into heaven. And then after what the Lord has showed me, 
I mean, I know my loved ones are in a better place. Why is that? Because they all accepted our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so with that said, you know, the only way you can get there, people, is if you accept him. So, you're going to do what I always like to do in the end, and that's read the scripture. Okay, so we're going to read Romans. Let me go to it, people. We're going to read Romans 10. What is this app? Hold on, people. Romans 10. Romans 10, 9. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And I'm going to tell you, people, what was interesting in looking at surviving death is that majority of the people actually didn't even believe in God. One was even an atheist. But God sees the heart. So here it is. When they died and they felt the love of God, the Lord sent them back and now they're on fire for the Lord. Okay, so now next time they know definitely it's going to be open arms. It even had one James Woodward, Woodford rather, he gave his testimony saying that when he died, he saw heaven and he saw hell. But right before he died, he said, God, please forgive me. And then he spoke about when he was between heaven and hell. And it's as if, you know, the demonic spirit, the devil, whatever was coming for him. He cried out, Jesus, help me. And the angels came and helped him. And now he's on fire for the Lord. People, why go through that? Just profess and claim him now. Save yourself that agony and that trouble. And know that he is God. And his word said that he shall never leave us nor forsake us, but be with us to the ending of time. I want to thank you, people, for coming on 100 and 0. And what's 100 and 0? Kapow! God's record. The true undefeated champion. Until next time, people, take care and God bless. And I will see you next year in 2022. Ciao.